What's up, folks? Hey, guess what we're gonna do today? Today, we're gonna be stealing my friend's boat and going out there and put some crappie in the boat. Um, that's right, we're gonna be stealing his boat. We're at his house, he's not here. Never been on his boat by myself. Got my rods all ready to go. Got my winter suit. Let me tell you, the goal of today's video is just gonna be catching fish. I'm gonna walk you guys through everything. That thing's just not gonna stay there, is it? I'm gonna walk you through everything that I'm doing, not even on my own boat, but, come on, you got it. There it is. Um, but we're just gonna flat out put fish in the boat. That's the goal, okay? So, hey, a lot of people have asked me about my uh, winter gear. No, no promo, folks. Got get nothing from Striker Ice, but I love my Striker Ice. This is a hard, hard water bib. I rarely need the top and the bottom. I just put the bottom on most of the time, and uh, that's usually gonna do me well. Now, unless it's like you know south of 20, then maybe I'll put the top on. But the bottom, good to go. Reno's not gonna get here until uh this evening and I said you know what I got a fish and my boat's getting worked on right now with all the electrical stuff that we're adding and so it's out for the week and uh, then I got a bunch of guide trips coming up this month so I don't know when it's all gonna get done but it's in the process some of it's in the process right now so which is cool new live scope number two live scope on the boat the boats getting wrapped um, lighting, new lighting that's going to go around inside so I can turn on a switch and the whole thing will glow up. That'd be cool. All right. Important message from for those that are going to be YouTubers and want to film themselves. Get yourself a power pack. It goes with me no matter where I go. I can I can keep that, that, uh, that GoPro rolling weeks with just one, one battery pack. So I've got a couple of them now, and it works very well. So, now, I've never been on <laughs> Reno's boat, uh, so it'll be interesting. Hopefully I don't have to call him and harass him. So he does, in fact, know that I'm taking his boat, but he's, uh, he's at work, and uh, I'm gonna give it a rip on my own in his boat. So. He's got some like 60 stairs going down to the boat, so we only want to make one trip. Check it out. It's a long way down there, folks. So you don't want to have to go back up. So I got my phone. I got everything. Got my Ozark rods. I'm bringing three of them. Got a, all my jigs from Jinko Fishing are in my bibs. They got nice big pockets in these suckers. And we're just gonna make it happen. Here we go. Gonna be an interesting day in Reno's boat. The water is uh, relatively calm. I think we've got about a nine mile an hour wind from the south. It is going to be a high of 45 degrees. So not a bad day, really not a bad day. But the wind has been, the key here is the wind has been blowing from the south for a couple days now. And that's always, a good thing you want to keep the wind consistent constantly blowing from the same direction that means those crappie just continue to build up in those coves so let's get this thing going wow that started up right away i'm kind of impressed reno <laughs> that thing started up right away i was kind of worried about that not that I thought the boat wouldn't, it was a bad boat or anything. I just might not know exactly how to start it up. But. So obviously a, a deep V boat style boat is a lot different than a bass boat that I have. Um, I actually contemplated getting a Crestliner deep V for the longest time. I gotta tell you, the thing I like about them the most is the how comfortable the seats are, how they sit up, that you're not crouched down and very comfortable. And he's got this, uh, the actual windshield that's fixed. And that's really nice. I mean, wind blockage. Uh, so as far as the boats are concerned, I like the deep V style. The only concern I always have with the deep V is the amount of room that you have up front. I'm not concerned about a deep V taking on too much wind. I think the Ultrex takes care of that now. Um, it'll put you on spot lock and it'll be tough for the wind even to blow this boat around. But 
In terms of room on the deck, I think that's a concern for guys that want to do spider rigging. But I'll tell you, as far as being a comfortable boat, this is this is awesome. This is fish this before we're gonna try it anyway because you just don't know ever give it a rip potato chip I'll tell you what the monitor looks pretty good check it out there's some fish down there holding close to that structure it just seemed like there was a lot of fish around this area not just that one particular spot makes sense because it's a south wind and this is a little south corner uh, a fish here. Oop, there it goes that one didn't take long at all first fish on hard fought fish all right that's our first fish of the day man that didn't take long that's crazy moon phase who knows about this moon phase thing nice little eater I don't know. We're gonna let him go today. There you go. Big boy. Let you go. Da, da, da. One fish. Let's see if we can't get the jig bite going. When I come to these, a situation like this, you saw I brought three poles. Um, it gives me an opportunity to vertical jig, fish under a float, and then a jig pole um, straight up. So, you know, you don't have to do that. That's just something I makes me feel more comfortable to have as much as I can. And then my pockets are loaded down with baits. This is a great time to get out and fish. I'm telling you, there's less boat traffic and the crappie bite is on guide trips here in southern Illinois people have been asking me where do you guide at uh, most all lakes in southern Illinois so check them out Kincaid Rin Lake Lake of Egypt all great fisheries worth the travel I've had people come in from Tennessee Arkansas Mississippi got a group coming from Mississippi next week actually We got some big crappie here too, folks. All right, so my buddy Reno was telling me all about the moon phase, and this was gonna be a really terrible day to go fishing. I gotta tell you folks, it wasn't easy. And uh, we struggled a little bit. We went from spot to spot, I'll show you some of those spots. We did catch another slab, you're gonna see that here shortly, but definitely something I'm gonna look into in terms of the moon phase, without a doubt. And we're back to where we started. This has been one of the toughest days ever. Maybe it's because it's, I'm in a buddy's boat, or maybe it's just a tough bite. He told me that the moon phase was not in favor. In other words, the moon was out last night like a sun, and they ate all night. Well, I'm starting to believe them, which means I'm gonna do an episode on that. probably would not hurt to have or understand where and when the moon is going to be out in its bliss because right now I feel like I gotta blame it on something that's what I'm blaming it on
solid fish. Man, not an easy day. Let's blame it on the moon. Good fish. So Reno has uh, two, two 12 inch monitors, live scope, one live scope system, two 12 inch monitors. He also has the Ultrex, so it's very similar feeling being in this boat, like being in my boat. The difference is it's definitely, you know, it's a high V, it's smaller, it's a little bit more compact, but still nice. What a beautiful day! Man, that was brutal. Two fish, and now I gotta climb all these stairs. <sighs> oh well, just keeping it real, folks. They're not all perfect days. So let's name that episode. It's not all perfect days. I gotta go up all those steps now. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Not every day is gonna be a perfect day, but maybe I'm becoming more of a believer in this moon phase thing. Definitely gonna go get me a calendar. Do some episodes on that, so. What a day! What a day! What a day!